Gravitationally challenged is a phrase I hear quite a lot, but just exactly how challenging is gravity? I am, of course, talking about the power to weight ratio. Everyone knows that the heavier you are, the harder it is to ride a bike uphill. This is one of the basic tenets of cycling. Meet my cycling chum, Kev. As you can see from his Strava profile, he's a reasonably fit cyclist in his early 40s. He's very kindly agreed to help me with an experiment to demonstrate the effect that extra weight has when riding a bike uphill. Seeing as we're getting all scientific, here are the numbers on the weight side of the equation. Kev weighs 85 kilos and his bike weighs 9.1 kilos, making a grand total of 94.1 kilos or 207.45 pounds. To measure his power output, Kev's bike is equipped with a set of Stages Shimano 105 power cranks. Kev's been riding to power for a few months and it's now one of the key metrics he uses in his training. The main benefits of having a power meter is that it regulates the power that you put through your legs. Um, people say that they can do that through intuition, but when I got my power meter, I realized that I didn't have uh, a very good idea at all about what power I was actually putting through my legs. Depending on the gradient of climb you're going up, um, you could be putting out 300 on the flats, and then as soon as you start going uphill, you think you're putting the same, but actually I noticed I was putting in twice as much power for the first 20 or 30 seconds, and then having a mini blowout, and then coming down to your sort of climbing pace, so it stops you from overexerting and frying your legs. Um, and on long climbs, the end result is that it makes you quicker going up that hill. So here we are at our secret closed hill climb test track, and I've already created a Strava segment which is 2.7 kilometres or 1.68 miles long. As you can see from the profile, it ascends for 96 metres with an average gradient of 4%. Kev will ride this course three times. For his first ascent, he maintains an average power output of 250 watts. This, divided by 94.1 kilos of the combined weight of him and his bike, gives him a power to weight ratio of approximately 2.65 watts per kilo. Kev completes the course in 9 minutes, 5 seconds. So OK, now we're going to do our second run and we've weighed Kev down with about 6 kilos. As with his first run, Kev will ride up while maintaining an average power output of 250 watts. Now though, the extra 6 kilos has increased the overall weight to 100.1 kilos or 220.7 pounds and reduced his power to weight ratio down to 2.49 watts per kilo. The 6 extra kilos represents approximately a 7% increase in weight and a difference of 0.16 of a watt per kilo in his power to weight ratio. This may not sound like a great deal, but it will have a profound effect on his ability to ride the course. As you can see, Kev completed the course in 9 minutes 43 seconds, which is 38 seconds slower than his first run. Percentage-wise, this means he was approximately 8% slower. Um, significantly slower, nearly but 0.8 mile an hour slower. So that's uh, very telling. For Kev's third and final run, he'll ride up with the weight, but this time we'll see how much harder he has to work to complete the course in the same time as his first run. So his target time is 9 minutes 5 seconds. This will almost certainly be the hardest run of the three. Kev finishes the third run in 9 minutes and 10 seconds, only 5 seconds behind his first time. But in order to achieve this, he had to ride with an average power output of 272 watts, which is 22 watts more than the first ascent. Interestingly, this also represents an increase of about 8% in power. So just a couple of seconds slower. But funnily enough, got used to the extra weight after three rides up to this hilltop. But uh, yeah, definite increase in power there of basically 20 watts.
Based on these results, there appears to be a very direct relationship between the amount of extra weight added versus the extra time taken and the extra power to compensate. It would be very interesting to see what would happen if we dramatically increased the weight, say 20 kilos instead of 6, but that's probably another experiment for another day. Thanks for watching.